All right. Well, let's talk about this uh, crew at South Carolina. So Shane Beamer pats together a team this past season, especially the quarterback position. And when it was all said and done, I think some people were surprised they made it to a bowl game. And then once they got to a bowl game as a double digit underdog were really impressive in that game. And, and I got to say, watching that game wire to wire, I thought, man, I got to dig into this team to see if uh, they may be able to do something here in uh, 2022. Yeah, you know, I, I think there, there's a lot to it. I don't we probably don't have all the time to uh, start getting into into what I think and whatnot. But certainly when you start with with 2021, um, just the fact I, I don't know how many teams in the history of college football have had uh, three starting quarterbacks win four games each, I think is what it was. I, they, I know there's three starting quarterbacks that, that had to start and then a fourth one. If you if you count the fact that the carry on joiner technically started at the quarterback position. Uh, for the bowl game, I guess you give Zeb Nolan the start at wide receiver because they jogged out there at the same time, but it was Joyner taking the snap. So four, I guess, I guess to, to play along with that, four starting quarterbacks this year, four quarterbacks start a game and get the victory. So that was certainly something, you know, you take advantage of what happened with Florida late in the season and their collapse. Certainly that was not something we saw. So, yeah, it is good. And you, you thumped Florida, but you, you took advantage of that. Auburn had a collapse late in the season. You took advantage of that. And then whatever happened in the bowl game, I, you know, North Carolina from their standpoint, whether it was South Carolina being just mentally more ready, physically more ready, wanting to be there, you know, better coach. I, we can go through, again, a whole show of stuff on maybe what occurred, but you took advantage of it. And now you go into the offseason where there's been some recruiting momentum. Obviously, the Spencer Rattler news, Austin Stogner, also the tight end. They've done well in the transfer portal um, over several days here by landing a couple guys and uh, you know, we'll see where it takes them. There's still a lot of question marks about the offensive coordinator and that schedule next year. For all the excitement, we we're actually talking about it this morning. For all the excitement, South Carolina is looking at a game against Georgia State to start the season. Then you go to Arkansas, and then you got the defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs in week three. So everybody gets excited. You put them in the preseason top 25, and, you know, it could be a one and two start if you're not careful. Yeah, this uh, quarterback situation was pretty fascinating, uh, but that should be all settled here in 22. So, yeah, three different starting quarterbacks during the regular season. And then Day Creek on Joyner, if I'm not mistaken, because I looked it up at the time, he had thrown like one pass in two seasons. And he comes out here and goes nine for nine. <laughs> and he runs around most of the time, and uh, they piece it together and get it done. Uh, and just as a side note, I know we're looking forward to 22. I was really impressed that Kevin Harris, who – already had decided and announced right after the game he's going off to the NFL draft in this world of opt-outs, goes out there and lugs it 31 times for a buck 82 to basically say, I want to finish out my college career, do it with a win, big performance, and then he goes off to the NFL. So I just thought that was a class act and, and performance out of him. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the, the way running backs are these days, obviously, any ch any opportunity you can go ahead and get to get to the NFL and, and start getting carried, start getting paid uh, and not continue to abuse your body at the at the college level makes perfect sense. And, you know, I, I think, again, there, there's so many little uh, side things that we can have discussions about. And one of them is, you know, at the college level, there's so much of an emphasis on let's have a two back or three back system. Georgia had three backs there on, on Monday night with uh, Cook and White and Kenny McIntosh. But, you know, I don't know if that always works. And, and maybe Kevin Harris didn't have the season that he expected to have, one, maybe because of the injury going into the season, two, because you're splitting time with Zaquandre White and Juju McDowell. And then Marshawn Lloyd was back there. And for the bowl game, you had White, uh, who, was, who had opted out. Marshawn Lloyd is injured the week of the bowl game. And you're, you're essentially down to two running backs and Kevin Harris – and Juju McDowell, Rashad Amos was another guy that we thought might get some carries. But you see Kevin Harris get the bulk of the carries, and he was allowed to wear down North Carolina, similar to what he did in 2020. And, and so maybe it's an argument, a broad spectrum argument of how teams utilize running backs these days. Obviously, Georgia does it differently than, than everybody when you recruit 12 different five-star running backs. But the bottom line is you had this opportunity for Kevin Harris. And now he totally took advantage of it, put some film uh, out there for NFL teams who may wonder whether or whether or not he was healthy going into the NFL uh, combine and draft. And certainly it was a, a golden opportunity that he took supreme advantage of.